Welcome to TradersArmy.com, defending your right to build wealth and preserve capital for generations to come. Yeah, Friday. What's up, everybody? Friday morning. Welcome to today's edition of the Daily Market Commentary. I'm your host, Chuck Fulkerson. Hope you guys all had a great trading day yesterday, as we did not have a DMC yesterday since we were in our live trade room. So some of the lines we have will be from the Trader's Army live trade room, uh, as we are down about 22 points in the S&P and about 70 in the NASDAQ. Uh, before I do that, if you're new to the channel, do me a favor, click the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, get the alerts, the updates, all those other fun pieces. And also, if you are interested in joining Trader's Army, today is the last day of our uh, 2020 promo. Uh, you can get your first month for just $20.20. That's right, $20.20 for your first month. Uh, so go ahead uh, to the site and join us. Uh, if you are interested in getting a full year membership, you actually get 20% off of your full year membership. All right, let's go ahead and roll. Uh, so looking at the S&P this morning, yesterday we had found a really nice little little level, and it was a very, very small zone. Uh, I'm going to pull it up here. It was just this little wick over wick area on a 15-minute chart where we d we gave it a beautiful little touch and go for a nice little three-to-one move out of that level. Now, the second time we came into that level, we kind of based a little bit and popped right through it. I mean, just ran up towards the end of the day yesterday. Now, uh, that level that we ran into at the end of the day yesterday, we then um, hit that zone and have sold off pretty hard from that level. Now, you may or may not have stayed in the trade long enough to take advantage of this move down, as most of this move down occurred in the overnight hours. Um, so now that we've traded all the way to the top of this level, I need to remove it from my uh, from my charts. But I do want to take a look and see what's inside of this move down that's worth taking a look at. So when I go into the 15 minute zone, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna open up the 15 minute level and come take a look at this area right in here. I think that we have. You know, you've got the pivot high up here, but I'm going to look just a bit below the pivot high um, as our area where we may see a bit of a turning point, And that would be a purple level because it's a 15 minute chart uh, in case we get a little bit of a rally today. I actually kind of like this level right in here uh, as well. Both of those are are fairly decent little rallies. This is a little wick over wick on a 15 minute chart, kind of hidden below a pivot, if you will. Looking next at the uh, at the Nasdaq, so our Nasdaq level once again, our fifteen minute level, our level worked very well yesterday for a nice little three to one. Uh, so if you're able to catch that move, great. Let me know in the comment section below. Unfortunately, our Nasdaq breakout did not work as well because we didn't get basing inside the level. Um, it just popped right through without the basing. So without that basing, that level loses a bit of validity uh, and then price uh, price then rockets back up and we see that we came into our level now technically if you stayed in this uh, if you if you got into this trade your execution entry would have been th this would execute the trade and then we got one two three four five after six candles price had really gone nowhere so you move your stop to break even and you're still getting the run price is still running down from that air from that area. Now, what's uh, what's causing some of this uh, some of this fall off and, and price dropping down is the uh, the effective Brexit uh, that uh, that we will that we see uh, in uh, in in the UK today, as it's finally finally looks like it's uh, gonna gonna happen with the Brexit piece, and that's really what caused most of that sell off in those markets. So, looking at crude oil, we see that crude oil we we popped a little bit yesterday and then we're unable to really hold much of that pop and have since rolled over now we didn't have a whole lot of levels identified frankly because there wasn't a lot of great reversal points and so uh, in the overnight after we got that little bit of a sell-off i think we still may see some things on a 15 minute chart here but i'm really not going to add anything much to crude oil same thing with gold there's not a whole lot to add in gold as we got a little bit of a sell-off yesterday um, almost came back to the level that I had identified for our demand zone. So this is a little wick over wick here above a pivot low. So if you see price come back into that area, I think that's a good opportunity. I think there's a chance that today 
we'll see price roll over here a little bit. We're putting in a really nice bearish reversal candle here. So theoretically, if this comes out, you know, we're recording this at uh, looks like about 10 minutes to 5 central time. So when this comes out, if we have a candle that's lower than here, it might be a good opportunity for a candle to candle play. Hopefully I can get it up and uploaded and posted fast enough. All right, looking here at our bond market. So in our bond markets yesterday, I will say that I was looking here for a potential uh, a potential breakout. Didn't get the basing directly in front of the level. So price gave us uh, a bit of a move away from that breakdown. Uh, did not quite make it into the demand zone. And, uh, and now we've rallied up in the overnight sessions. I'm not going to add this to my short list, uh, be primarily because... We're in a big picture upward trend, so I'm going to let price continue to run. I still think we may get a breakout above here later today. Uh, in the Aussie, price continues to fall in the Australian dollar as we have been looking at this level, uh, at this for quite a while. And remember, you're, you, you make money trading as a day trader. You make wealth holding on for long-term trends. And this long-term trend has been something that's been pretty evident uh, inside of the Aussie for quite a while, right? Even going all the way back to the to the weekly chart. And so, you, you know, I'm, I'm not really looking for longs at this point, and there's no reason to do so. I, I'm, I'm looking for shorts as price comes back in. We got a little breakdown from here. Unfortunately, didn't quite get the basing I would, I would like to see uh, inside of that kind of a move down. But I do have this little area right here where we could see price return back into uh, for, a, for a reversal. Uh, in the euro, so the euro, we got a little bit of a of a bottoming pattern here, kind of forming as we popped up off of this zone. But in order for me to really get long, I'd like to see some basing in front of this potential breakout line of seven thirty four. So we'll see if that continues and stays in place. And then the Canadian dollar, big sell off in the overnight as it almost came back up to the level, was unable to get filled. Uh, and so now I'm gonna take and look at this little level right here, uh, which is 70, 75687 by 7, uh, 75656. Tiny little level wrapped around that doji, formed right there, right around the European market open. And then our great British pound, uh, not quite as much of a movement as I would have expected on the, uh, the, the final formal announcement of Brexit, uh, but did get a bit of a movement on that piece as it gained some strength. Uh, and on our four hour, we can see that we still have this area here that's a, a decent potential breakdown. But our sideways price action tells me there's probably not a whole lot that I should be looking to do um, at, uh, at this time on there or on the yen. So neither the pound or the yen are giving me really much clear trend direction. But don't, once again, on a day like today when we're down a couple of hundred points in the Dow and we're down 20 points in the S&P, don't chase. Uh, you know, we started the week with a huge gap down in these markets, you know, started the week with a 30 point gap down in these markets and people that chased got 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 hammered. Don't chase markets. Um, rallied back up, actually had a really good week with a, with a number of really strong trades um, inside the daily market commentary. So if you are if you if you are so inclined, go back and watch some of those um, because we had a lot of uh, a lot of movement. But in all reality, what did the market do for the week? Well, we we started the week here and we're currently there right now. So it's one of those weeks where we, sure, we, we, we were down, but we're not down all that much. Um, and price came up and came down and came up and came down. But in reality, it was looking for areas of demand and supply, and it truly is in a fair price value area where we've got a number of buyers and sellers. So just continue to look for those areas uh, where, we, where we find price imbalance to give us an opportunity to get in. But if you have any questions, please send us an email. As always, support at tradersarmy.com. Until tomorrow, everybody. I will talk to you soon. See you.